SmackDown vs. Raw 2010 was the 11th title in the long-running SmackDown series. It introduced several key features that would be used for years to come, and several of these features are still in use today. We have seen the series change so much over the past 11 years to this point, and many fans would drop off after the game further ditched the arcade style of gameplay seen in the early SmackDown games. So in this video, we'll talk about key features being changed and 5 things you may have forgotten about SmackDown vs. Raw 2010. Story Designer was a feature added to this year's game that gave you many options in telling any story you desired. In this mode you could create your own pay-per-views, book your own matches, and even add storylines in between matches. You could also download other people's storylines and upload your own for other people to play. You could add things like subtitles and scenarios where anything you wanted to happen could happen. This was a very popular feature that will hopefully return in the near future. SmackDown vs. Raw 2010 featured many new matches such as a championship scramble and mixed tag team match. But did you know the Nintendo DS version had an exclusive match not seen in any of the other console versions? The Nintendo DS version had an ambulance match that you could play for the first time in the series. In the match, you had to lure your opponent to the ambulance and shove them inside tapping buttons in perfect succession until the ambulance would drive off through the crowd. While this wasn't the best match to play, new matches are something people beg for every year and hopefully we will get to see a real ambulance match in future titles. CW was revived in 2006 after a successful pay-per-view known as One Night Stand. This had fans excited but only around a month after ECW was resurrected, it was clearly evident that it wasn't the same. Feeling more like a WWE product than an ECW one, fans rejected it and it kind of stuck around for the next 4-5 to five years as a neglected third brand. ECW's presence in the SmackDown games over the years was nice, bringing a lot of new and exciting concepts to the series. However, in SmackDown vs Raw 2010, this would be the final title in the series to incorporate the ECW license. ECW was cancelled in 2009 and turned into NXT in the same year. Intergender matches were always my favorite thing to do in the SmackDown series. Only in a video game could you see matches such as Goldberg vs Stacey Keebler or The Big Show vs Sable. However, with the SmackDown series taking a more realistic approach, it only made sense that this feature would have to be removed. In my opinion, the SmackDown series was at its best when it was more of an arcade style of gameplay and you could do things such as jumping out of helicopters or throwing people off the SmackDown fist. But all of that was being taken out including intergender matches so that the game could match the boring style we see each and every week on television. <laughs> Community Creations is the saving grace of the modern Smackdown games. Even though the gameplay isn't as fun as earlier titles, the ability to download any wrestler you want is one of the most amazing features ever put into a video game. Before community creations, you would have to go on shady websites like COD.WS and find formulas people had made for wrestlers. Then you had to meticulously put in every value until you could get whatever wrestler you wanted. Most of the time the wrestler wouldn't even turn out like how they look in the original you were trying to copy. But now you don't have to worry about that because thanks to community creations, you can download any wrestler you could possibly think of, ranging from old legends to future stars you never would have thought would be in a WWE game. Oh. 